Do you think it's important to live a holy life? If you are a Christian, a Christ a follower, people ask me, what does it mean to follow Christ? It means to turn away from your sin. Those habitual sins, those those things that you used to do that you didn't really care if God saw or knew or if anyone knew or saw or cared, those things. Because what happens is when you become born again, the sins that you commit in this lifetime, they are so grievous to you and they're grievous to the Holy Spirit that when the Holy Spirit dwells within the Christ follower, you just can't keep going. You can't keep going because part of the job of the Holy Spirit is to convict you, to correct you, to counsel you, to guide you, to show you how to get out of that habitual sin. So I want to ask you today, should Christians live holy? Of course they should. But the other thing that we see in this world is that they're not. What it is is like you have to put on these lenses and see people through the Bible because so many people are Christian by name only. But let me tell you something. There is absolutely no way, 0% chance that when a person comes into contact with the living God, that they are not changed from the inside out. There is no way you cannot encounter Jesus Christ and not be completely changed. Let's look at what the Bible says about being holy. 1 Peter 1.16 says, You shall be holy for I am holy. When you're following someone, like a little boy tries to tie his shoes because he's looking up to his father and following his father and his father's teaching him how to tie the shoe. You do what he does. And you may not do it perfectly at the beginning, but you keep following him because that's what he's doing. That's what it means to follow someone. Hebrews 12, 14 says, strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness with, without which no one will see the Lord. This is the very most important scripture I'm gonna talk about to you, with you today. Is that last part. Without it, no one will see the Lord. When you don't live a life that is holy, all people see is compromise. All people see is hypocrisy. All people see is something that is not godly. There are so many churches now, right now, you can go to, you can visit, in Texas there's a church on every single corner sometimes too. And I visited so many. You could go to a handful of churches in the course of three months or longer and just visit a new church every single week. And you will see the trash that's being taught in the church. It's not about holiness. It's not about walking the straight and narrow road and taking up your cross to follow Jesus Christ. And it's not about the truth that the Bible says that when we encounter Jesus Christ, we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. So if you are not a new creation in Christ Jesus and yet you're going to church on Sunday and you're saying you're a Christian and you, your life is not changed, you really need to question if you're saved. Because the Bible is very clear that when we follow the Holy Spirit, when we are led by the Holy Spirit, these fruits of the Spirit come alive in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, did I say that one already? And self-control. And so these are the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit that they reveal to you that you are being led by the Holy Spirit. If your life isn't transformed, you can call yourself a Christian all the way to hell. It, it doesn't matter. There has to be an inner transformation. There has to be an inner surrender. There has to be an inner laying down, 
laying down your life before Father God, that's what it means to allow God to be the Lord of your life. Just like Hebrews 12, 14 says, if you don't have holiness, no one will see the Lord. All they are going to see is the stench of hypocrisy. Leviticus 20, 26 says, you shall be holy to me for I am the Lord and I am holy. And I have separated you from the peoples that you should be mine. God has called his children out of this world. We are to be in the world, but not of the world, meaning he can't take us and transport us to heaven right now. But we don't have to live according to this world's ideals. The world's ideals tell you that it's okay to have an abortion. And the Bible says, it is absolutely not okay to have an abortion. The world tells us it's okay to be a transgender or a gay person, a lesbian or a, um, a gay person, transvestite, all the different names. Um, but the Bible says that the transgenders and the transvestites and any sexually immoral person will not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm not against people. I love people. And that's why I do this to, to tell the truth speaking the truth in love that's what we are called to do as christ followers the world tells us to get everything that you can in this earth you know the yolo message and that we are to go after all of the sex we can get all the lust of the flesh all the pride and the arrogance and the material possessions but god's word is completely opposite of that he said that we are to take up our cross we are to die to self we are to follow after Jesus Christ. So you have to remember that these aren't my words. This is the word of God. So don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> the Bible is very clear that people will hate us because they hated God. It's not the you that they hate. It's the, the God that you represent. It's who they represent hates who you represent. Do you hear what I'm saying? The most people that come after me are those that are living a compromised life. Those that are following the devil, whether they know it or not. And so I can literally walk into a room and I'm sure some of you have had this same experience or encounters before and people just hate you. They don't even know why, but it is a spiritual matter. This is why it's so important to live a holy life because he who is within you as a follower of Christ, an authentic one, is greater than he who's in the earth. And that's why when you step into that room, the person who's following the devil hates you. They hate you. <laughs> if no one hates you in this life, you need to question your salvation. Because when the presence of God shows up in a space, it's known. There is a spirit realm ramification when the Holy Spirit shows up. Let me tell you what Romans 12, 2 says. It tells us, do not be conformed to this world. Don't go doing what the world says, telling you it's okay to have the abortions and all the things I just listed off. We are to follow Jesus Christ. And when we follow Jesus Christ, he will make our lives completely transformed. There is no way that your life will remain the same. If you got born again last year or 20 years ago or 30 minutes ago, and you do not have a sense of transformation in your spirit, in your mind, you need to question that because there is a false gospel there's many false gospels going on in the churches today that are telling people that it's okay everyone's a sinner everyone falls short of the glory of god and while that is true that does not give you the key to just continue on in your sin to continue on living the life that you want to live God called us to lay down our lives and allow him to be the Lord of our life. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says that God provides a way from the temptation so that when you are feeling that temptation, you know that God is providing a way for you. 
He will provide the way out for you. There's nothing that you could be running around and maybe you feel that old life of yours trying to rise up and or those old people, they're still kind of hanging on to you and they're trying to pull you into the direction of unholiness. Maybe it's, you know, going here and going there and watching these movies, reading those dirty magazines and, you know, hanging out at strip clubs and whatever it is, the list goes on and on. Anything that is unholy, unpure, that is not God. And any pastor or teacher that you go to inside a house called worship or a house of the Lord that tells you that it is okay that everyone sins and we all fall short of the glory of God, giving you sort of a license to sin, get out of that church. That is not what the Bible tells us. That is not what the Bible teaches us. The Bible teaches us to be holy so that people will see Jesus Christ in us. And they may laugh at you, believe me, they do. They may laugh at you, make fun of you, ostracize you, not invite you. And they'll be like, oh, who do you think? You're better than us. You don't drink, you don't party, you don't this, you don't that. And you know what you say? I'm just following Jesus. Just following Jesus. That's all you have to say. You don't owe these people an explanation. All you need to do is point people to Jesus. Let them live in their debauchery. Let them live in their orgies and revelries and everything else that the Bible tells us is of, is of the devil. But not you. Not you. You are an authentic follower of Jesus Christ. And maybe you hear this message today and you're wondering, am I saved? Am I an authentic follower of Jesus Christ? I don't see the fruits of the Spirit in my life. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't know Jesus today, or maybe you have slid down that slippery slope of compromise and you want to get back on the path today of holiness. This message is for you. God has put this upon my heart to speak the truth to you in love and give you an opportunity to either accept him as Lord and Savior or turn around. Do not be deceived. Those who live an unholy, impure life will not inherit the kingdom of God. God's word says it, not Randy's word. God's word says it. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if you don't know him or you're backslidden or you have just been kind of pulled in the temptation today, make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. All you have to do, the Bible says, is surrender to him your life. You believe that Jesus Christ rose from the grave. You confess him as Lord and Savior. You allow him to be the Lord of your life. That means you repent of your sin and you turn from your lies, from your wicked ways, from whatever sins you are committing right now that you haven't cared about before. And when you do that, when you start walking that way, God will meet you right there. It's like he runs up on there, runs up on you, and he's right there. Because God does not hear any other prayer from an unsaved person except God save me. People pray all the time and they say, oh yeah, I pray to God, I pray to God. Well, God ain't hearing you. God only hears one prayer from an unsaved person and that is God save me. If you are not a child of God, he's not going to answer your prayer. So if you chose to follow him today and receive him as Lord and Savior, oh, I want to pray for you. Please let me know. Let me know. And I want to say, keep going. Don't turn back. God gives you a way, which I just read to you in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. God provides a way out from the temptation. Don't stop following Jesus. There are a remnant of us left that are actually following Christ. Get in a lock arm position with those people. And don't turn back. And I want to say thank you to all who support this ministry, who follow this ministry, who share these videos. Thank you, thank you, share this video so someone can be encouraged and hear the truth of the gospel in love. Come and follow me on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. See you next time.